Hello and welcome to the last video of the year. So today, for the last video of 2015, I've got this mixture between a landscape and the wildlife edit. So I'm gonna take the raw file and I'm gonna turn it into a photo like this while explaining to you, of course, every single step I do. I really like this image, especially because of the very special look on the cow's face and of course as well the beautiful view in the background. So let's get started here, raising the shadows, bringing down the highlights, just my regular stuff, bringing down the blacks. I'm not gonna pay that much attention towards the cow at the start, I'm just kinda uh, going for the right look in the landscape in the background, so let's just adjust the white slider and definitely I'm gonna bring up the contrast as well might be a little bit too much vibrance but I'm gonna adjust that in a second overall exposure I really think overall exposure is just fine color temperature hmm I like this kind of a little bit warmer than neutral color temperature so I think I'm just gonna stick with the one I had at the start and tint I mean tint, maybe just a little bit more magenta, and yeah, that works pretty well. Now clarity, as you can see, the background is uh, pretty much all out of focus, and that is just because I focused on the cow, and I think it works pretty well, the contrast between, you know, the foreground element and the background that is out of focus, I think it all works pretty well together. But in terms of clarity, I don't really, maybe just a little bit into the plus, definitely not too much here. And vibrance, as I said before, I think by bringing up the contrast that much and bringing down the black so much, it almost is a little bit too vibrant. So I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit, maybe around minus eight. And yeah, that definitely brings back the natural look. And before I go down to the other adjustments, let me just quickly zoom in here and remove this person with the spot removal tool. Just kind of distracting. Well, of course Lightroom doesn't do a good job when I'm recording. Sometimes you really just have to right click and uh, select new source. And hopefully I will get lucky at least in a few seconds here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So then let's go down to the tonal curve and of course play around with this one as well maybe just bringing up the highlights a little bit and the rest the light slider not gonna change anything there i'm sure you know what to do with the tonal curve adjustment so let me just finish up here and in terms of point curve i'm just think i'm gonna stick here at linear so it's really not that big of an adjustment on the tonal curve for this photo before after just a little bit more contrast uh, in especially the cow right here then HSL tool, don't really think I have to play around with that. Split toning, I'm not quite sure if I want to add something, but I definitely want to play around with it. Let's go through all the colors, and at the end, I think it's either going to be orange or yellow. So let's see here, does it work? I think it works really, really well, actually, especially in the background. I think that a little bit of plus color works pretty well. Let me just fine tune the actual color. I think I'm gonna go a little bit more into the oranges. And yeah, just maybe around 30, maybe even a little bit more than that percentage saturation. So before the split toning and after, just a little bit more warmth. And you know, uh, split toning is completely different than this slider right here because split toning adds color a little bit more according to the lighting scheme and at the end makes it look a little bit more natural. Whereas the temperature slider really just adds temperature yeah, very, very evenly over the entire picture. Then detail tool. Now, as I said before, there's the background is completely out of focus. So I'm just gonna zoom here on the cow's face. I hope there's no identity thief for cows. But I am going to add a little bit of sharpening here, maybe just around 60. Of course, bring the mask into the right. 
and zoom back in again. Noise reduction, really don't think it's needed for this picture. Really barely any noise anywhere visible, but I am definitely gonna raise the color noise reduction slider. And I mean, I'm not quite sure once again how well you're gonna be able to see that on the video, but the entire cow looks so much cleaner without the color noise. Absolutely love this slider, just bring that to the right because oftentimes you will not even notice that there is color noise but just when you see the direct comparison between before and after you will notice that it looks so much cleaner so lens corrections remove chromatic aberration profile choose my lens so we get rid of the distortion and before after works pretty well here effects do i want to add any vignetting I think it might actually work, but I'm definitely going to bring the midpoint more towards the center and don't want to go too far with it, but just a little bit of vignetting works pretty well before and after. Then profiles is going to be the last thing I'm going to do in the global adjustment, so let's just quickly go through all of these settings and at the end choose whatever looks best. This doesn't look bad, but it's just way too saturated. A dope standard was this one. This might actually be one of the only pictures where I don't really like any other setting more than the standard. And yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with a dope standard, but really you definitely want to play around with this if you have a raw file because it's gonna change the look quite severely and in a lot of the t cases I really actually like what it does. Just here, it happens to be an exception and I like a dope standard the best. So then let's go up to the local adjustments and I think I'm just gonna kinda add some more vignetting. I don't really think I want to add any plus exposure right here where the light is coming from because it's already pretty bright. But I am just going to drag a graduated filter over the bottom right here and go a little bit into the minus exposure so we get the nice gradient and some more additional vignetting. That works pretty well. Then is there anything else I want to do? Maybe just grab a graduated filter and drag it over the top, very harsh edge and just try to close out the picture by bringing down the exposure. It's really something that really helps your photo oftentimes and if you don't do it too much it also doesn't really disrupt the lighting scheme even if you do it where the light is coming from. So I am going to add a last one down here to also close out the picture from the bottom. And yeah, I think that works pretty well. I am definitely going to add a quite a bit of dodge and burning, but before I do that, let me grab an adjustment brush and just adjust some adjustments on the face of this cow. So I think it's maybe just a little bit too much clarity for this hair. So I'm just gonna first of all paint a very very rough mask of this adjustment brush over this cow. Um, of course if you do this for yourself you want to be sure to make really sure that you don't clip anything. But just for the video's sake I'm gonna do it rather quick than precise. So once I've selected that, I just think I'm gonna go a little bit into the minus clarity. And yeah, it brings a little bit of the softness back and it makes these very harsh shadows between light and dark a little bit less obvious. So is there anything else I wanna do? I guess I could try to raise the shadows. Doesn't really have that big of a difference, but a little bit better looking at the end and exposure, I think it's the cow is bright enough. Maybe a little bit contrast, and yeah, I actually think that works pretty well. So I think I'm pretty much done with the overall picture. I think it looks very, very interesting. Um, maybe I'm just gonna grab an, a graduated filter over the very back portion right here, and I'm going to go to this color right there and add some orange or at least try to do so because I think the whole green tones look very good but maybe it's just a little bit too even so I'm just gonna try to kind of bring some more variance a little bit more differentiation in terms of color in the picture and just see if it works 
Hmm, I actually think it works pretty well from before to after. It just makes it a little bit more interesting, so I think I'm just gonna leave it. So then let's add some dodge and burning with the radial filter, of course, and unlike most of my pictures where I start off with plus exposure, I think in this case I'm gonna start off with negative exposure. And I'm also going to mix that with contrast, just because I don't really think plus exposure is as necessary as negative exposure. In this case, I really see a lot of areas that I want to make darker though. So let's just drag some over these trees here to kind of pronounce them a little bit more. Um, take this almost washed out look a little bit away. And I think it works pretty well. Um, maybe a smaller one over the very background. Let me know in the comments down below if you would like to skip these uh, dodge and burning sessions because there's really not much to tell you, you know. Uh, it's just adding filters wherever it looks natural and that's pretty much it. But of course if you really want to see me doing that and not skipping it, then I'm gonna keep doing that. So then you see the entire background is a little bit flat in terms of the exposures. I'm just kind of adding some patches right here to make everything a little bit more interesting, complexify the light, and just try out some different filters. Of course, I can adjust them later if they're just a little bit too much, or I can remove them entirely maybe make this entire hillside pretty dark so we really get to amplify this lighting scheme that works actually surprisingly well i think oh and especially right there hmm, it works really really well i don't think it would work if i would just make the entire background kind of darker it makes everything seem a little bit too flat and a little bit too even but just adding some filters in some portions right here i think works pretty well maybe even add another one for the previous one just for this part to kind of pronounce this uh, dark rock even more. So then let's finish up with the negative exposure. Maybe another filter right here next to this path. Just a small one. Right click duplicate. Does it work anywhere else? Maybe, maybe just in the foreground to add a little bit more complexity. Make this one a little bit bigger. Right click duplicate of course. Yeah, just I've added quite a bit of negative exposure dodge and burning filters here. Maybe even another one over this hill. And let me see if I want to add anything else. I think I might have gone a little bit too far with these two right here. So once again, that's why I really love these rail filters, because you can just go back and adjust something if it is too much. But yeah, at the end, I think in terms of negative exposure, we have a lot. Let's just see here before and after. Definitely looks way more contrasty. But now I'm just gonna add some more plus exposure filters and maybe even mix that with a little bit of orange right here in this color slider of the rail filter. So once again, just going with the lighting scheme, making sure that nothing looks unnatural, nothing is too much, just making everything a little bit more interesting. I don't think that there's quite a lot of plus exposure needed, but maybe just in some spots a little bit right click duplicate and maybe just on this top of this tree just a very small one right click duplicate and maybe in the middle of this forest to just to complexify the light so i think i'm pretty much done actually let me just try and bring some plus exposure over this cow but at the end well actually maybe it works if I take away the color. So um, dodge and burning is something I usually don't really do for wildlife or animal pictures, but it apparently works pretty well in this case. So that's very cool. Maybe just another one down here. 
And yeah, at the end, I think I'm done here with this picture. Let's see the before, the raw file without any adjustments. Why is there a flamingo? Like sometimes Lightroom really just messes up. But anyways, here is the raw file of this photo. And this is what I've made out of it. And I think this is one of my better pictures. And I really like the especially contrast between the very funny face of the cow and the very beautiful landscape in the background. Another thing that I thought about is just cropping out this white sky portion. But I think there's just kind of a dimension missing a sort of depth missing in the picture so instead of just grabbing an adjustment brush and going minus here and trying to recover any detail that really isn't there there's really no clouds i mean it's not overexposed in the sky but it's just white but i think it's at the end a better option than just trying to crop it out so once again i think i am done here left is before and the right is after so I hope you've enjoyed this last video of 2015. I'm definitely gonna try some other formats, maybe even on location landscape photography sometime in 2016. I have some big plans in terms of traveling and landscape photography and making more out of this YouTube channel and hopefully it's gonna work out. But anyways, as always, I wanna thank you very much for watching and watching all of these videos in 2015 it's really crazy how far this channel has come and how and how fast it grows it really is crazy so thank you very much for that and thank you very much for watching my videos happy new years see you in 2016 and of course take care